What's up guys, this is Ray from Biblical Thinking. I'm back with uh, another video that I wanted to do in regards to something that I found here in the news uh, the other day and I just wanted to share with you guys to see what you think, uh, get your opinions. I just wanted to share a brief opinion on my end. And I posted uh, just a little uh, description or a couple things earlier on uh, yesterday in regards to the situation so i just wanted to come back and do a video and uh, see what you guys think about it um it's about anthony bass now i'm not sure many of you are familiar with him i know i'm not that familiar with him because i don't follow sports uh, but i've had a, i have heard some things about him in the past because it's hard to uh, not hear about him and some of the things he has posted, especially just recently this week. So I wanted to go over actually not what he's done in the past, but just about what uh, uh, just transpired. Because uh, it has to do with Christianity. Uh, why do I want to care about the other stuff, right? I only, only want to care about what's biblical. So this is what transpired as far as uh, my understanding and what I've read. It's very hard to find some things in regards to what transpired. Um, but uh, here's the gist of it, okay? Now, some of us um, tend to express our Christianity sometimes in the wrong place and at the wrong time. And I believe this is what this gentleman did. Now, Anthony Bass is, a, I believe, he's part of the Toronto Blue Jays baseball team. I'm not sure if it's major league or not. Like I said, I don't follow sports. And, uh, but he's part of that baseball team. More than likely, it's major league, um, uh, maybe in Canada. I'm not too sure. But um, he's part of a baseball team. But he's also a Christian, which is why it caught my eye when I read this news. Because uh, Anthony Bass here is is representing Christians everywhere. You know, if you're if you go online uh, in any form or fashion in the media and claim to be a Christian, well, automatically now you represent Christianity, right? And that's what this gentleman did, and I believe he did so in a very wrong wrong way. And he gave Christians a very bad name. Not only did he give Christians a bad name, he gave himself a very bad name. And in essence, he gave God a very bad name. And this is what transpired. So I believe a lot of this is because uh, Christianity today, and it's always been this way, right? But uh, because right now it's it's just out there more because of social media. Christianity has become more politicized. And while they've always been into politics, it's more so now uh, because we see it more. It's more out there, right? And instead of the church being more about uh, spreading the word of God, they're more about spreading the word of their favorite candidates and getting into uh, uh, laws and politics, shall I say. And to a point, yes, we should engage in certain aspects, but we're engaging in things that we don't belong in. This should be left up to the state government, right? There's a separation that we see in regards to following God and follow, following the state. And we have biblical understanding of how we need to adjust that, correct? While churches today are actually engaging more and more into politics when they shouldn't. And because they're engaging more and more into politics, what's transpiring is they're encouraging their members to get more and more evolved in politics and certain aspects of the world that yes we should speak out on certain things but in other aspects we shouldn't be involved in this issue um and this is just my opinion if you have a difference of opinion that's okay and you can let me know what you think in the comments below i'm just sharing my opinion because i'm seeing this over and over and over again and ultimately at the end it does not turn out well when we engage in these things so what transpired with anthony bass let me just get right to it um so in this instance he is against um the lgbtq plus movement right which of course for all of us who are christians we know that's completely unbiblical uh, the Bible calls it an abomination, right? But it's not directed at the people, but it's directed at the lifestyle um, in which these people engage in, right? 
that type of act is the abomination, not the people themselves. Uh, so we must keep that in our understanding. Somehow, uh, I'm not sure because I forget if if this is part of it, that there was a baseball organization that invited uh, some LGBTQ members who dress like nuns <laughs> to their baseball park and it, it had some uproar so they disinvited them and then all of a sudden they invited them back because of pressure because the LGBTQ community uh, got involved, right? And I'm not sure if it's the Toronto Blue Jays who did this or not, but I know that's part of the situation. Uh, whether it's the Blue Jays or it was another organization. But for some reason, like I said, for some reason, Anthony Bass decided to use his platform on TikTok to uh, spread his message of Christianity. And this is what he said. I'm going to play the video on what he said. This video is actually hard to find. Uh, well, well, at least it was for me. Um I'm not on TikTok, but it, it was hard to find. I believe the video was deleted. I had to find it on someone else's platform uh, in order to play the video because I couldn't find the video by itself. But this is what he said. He's quoting from Ephesians 5, which is very interesting. But he quotes uh, this text. It's verse 11. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So this is his whole premise on why we should go against the LGBT uh, plus community. Now, we do believe that their fruits are of darkness, right? Like I said, the Bible calls that type of lifestyle an abomination. Um, but he's he's representing Christianity in a wrong way by doing this. And... As he's coming out, as you'll see in the video, he's coming out and speaking against them. Um, but he's speaking not so much against them, but he's targeting companies, right? And the reason why he's targeting companies is because as we've seen the past year, and this has been going on for a while, but mainly this past year, is a lot of these companies have been engaging and promoting the LGBTQ plus lifestyle. Um, mostly because there's um, kind of like how we have a credit score, right? Um, um, when we buy things or if we want to purchase a house, we have a credit score, right? Well, companies also have a credit score. Uh, but this credit score is in regards to how a company is uh, diversified amongst um, who they employ and where their outreach is. So in order for companies to have a good score, uh, they must um, openly uh, um, accept like LGBTQ+, they must uh, accept diverse individuals, uh, uh, which it means uh, diversity, equality, and stuff like that. It, they must mean that like on their commercials and their advertising, that they have to have people of ethnicity. They also have people of, of different sexual orientations, right? In order to increase that score, and that score also helps them with finance and marketing, things like that, right? If they don't engage in that stuff, well, it's going to hurt their business. Well, <clears throat> as we've seen of lately, many companies are doing it more openly, right? Disney for the past couple of years has been putting more openly gay characters in their movies. Uh, Bud Light, you've heard the recent uh, problem with uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, they've lost billions of dollars because people are backlashing over um, them having a, 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 um, a, a, what do you call it, a trans man. Uh, as their advertising person. Um, and now what uh, this guy's going to talk about is he, Bass, he's going to talk about Target because Target has recently came out with a clothing line to LGBTQ. Now, I find his stance pretty crazy. And for a certain reason, and I don't think we as Christians need to speak out on this type of stuff. Um for one reason, because it's not going to change anyone uh, to help them find God, right? And Well, let me just play this, and then I'll explain a little bit. So I'm just going to move the camera, and uh, let me play this. Let me play the sound. 
boycotting Target and Bud Light and any other corporation that's pushing the things they're pushing. I think a lot of people make this into a political issue or they say, oh, what's the big deal? If, you know, is it really going to make that big of a difference if I'm shopping there or not shopping there? Here's what the Bible says. It tells us what to do as Christians in Ephesians chapter five. It says this, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them for it is shameful to even talk of the things that they do in secret. So what does that mean to take no part? Well, what's Target do? It's a business. They, they make money. They sell things. And to take part in that is to take part in that God of mammon that they're serving and to take part in the darkness that they're purveying and getting out to the world and, and, and shoving into children's faces. And to take part in that is to give them your money. And I believe the Bible gives us radical precedent to say no. We are running from that. And to instead, instead expose those things. To, to, to shout it to all the people that have ears to hear that this is evil, this is demonic, we won't stand for it, we're not going to go to the stores anymore, and we're not going to give them our money. We're going to let our voice be heard so that people can see the light and so that people can be pulled out of the darkness. Here's the... Yeah. Okay. So that's the first video I have for you to watch there. Now, here's some things about the video, right? Um, let me adjust this camera here. Sorry about that. Okay, so let me turn to a different one. Okay, so here's some things about that, right? Which is very, very interesting. I'm sorry about the camera issues I'm having here. Um, how is this gentleman anthony bass by proclaiming that video bringing people to god really i mean is he really bringing people to god notice the way his intentions are he's talking about an organ organizing people together to do what boycott boycott who boycott target he mentioned Bud Light in the beginning, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, right? But what is his initial problem? His initial problem is something that a company is doing. His initial problem is not, I want to bring people to Christ. I want to go back and get back at a company that I don't believe is doing right. Okay, so can people organizing really hurt or change a company? Yes, they can, right? If they organize and there's enough of a backlash, a company will change uh, things. And they might not throttle all the way back, but just throttle back just a little bit. But here's the point in which I'm trying to make with this whole uh, problem and the video that he made. And people are giving him backlash because of the video he made because of his stance against against lgbtq right it's not because of his stance against target or his stance against bud light it's because of his stance against lgbtq but here i don't think the main problem is his stance against lgbtq i think his main stance is against the companies now the companies did something and this is why he's out crying right but is it that really the issue you know and is that the really the right way to do things you know we think that just because we have platforms that we can just go out and vent our issues to everybody and maybe get some clicks get some likes get some followers and that that is how it works but you know if you're a representative of christ is that the way to do things now he's coming at this as an organization type thing let's organize and let's fight against these demonic figures right now what i find interesting is he's going after target like many other christians are and he mentioned bud light in the beginning and he also mentioned the 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 verses there in ephesians 5 right which i read to you earlier now what's interesting about the chapter is the whole chapter and this is what a lot of christians do they take verses out of context right to prove their point now while the verse does talk about not following after those things. Here, let me read it for you again. It says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So, but rather reprove them 
for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So here in the verse, it's not talking about individuals. Now, the whole preface of, of chapter 5 is Paul encouraging the people not to go back to the ways that they were. He's reminding them, you guys used to be this way. And yes, they were unfruitful works of darkness. And don't go back to those ways, right? Because there was uh, people that could fall away after certain times, right? Paul's writing a letter back to the Ephesians telling them, don't do this. The church of Ephesus, don't fall into your old ways. But notice here in the verse, it talks about have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, right? He's not talking about individuals. He's not talking about um certain people he's just talking about the ways that they used to follow so he's saying don't have don't have fellowship with those things anymore right you've given your life to christ and because you've given your life to christ you changed you're a different person therefore don't fall back into the trap to doing those things that you were doing because they are evil now follow God, right? Now with that instance here, when he uses the verse, he's not going after an individual, right? But he's going after a company. And his argument with the company is, and he doesn't say it, but the argument with uh, Target is, is now they're coming out with the LGBTQ plus clothing line. And the clothing line is mainly meant for trans men. And, but what's funny is they've had a clothing line for a while. Many people have, right? But because it's came out on the news that Target decided to have a certain bathing suit style clothing line for men uh, who dress like women. Uh, you know how women wear the one piece bathing suit, right? Well, they made it now for men with, uh, um, how can I say, it's extra... Um, room for uh um the area where the men are different from women right and because that was publicized now many people are saying well we're never going to shop at target because now they have clothing line for for trans women or trans men whatever the case may be right well let me inform a lot of you about something clothing companies target everybody not just lgbtq if you've gone in the stores, there has always been a form or fashion of some sense of LGBTQ, even if it wasn't labeled LGBTQ. There's always been something. Why? Because they cater to everybody. It's not just a specific, per specific person or group. They've always had. I mean, you go into the store, like let's say, for instance, let's just talk reasonably, right? He's saying let's boycott Target because they're selling these things. Well, why only this? Why only LGBTQ? Does God call the lifestyle an abomination? Yes, he does. But what about, let's say, and I'm gonna go into this and maybe this may hurt some of you for me saying it, but let's say, why doesn't he bring up other things? You know, doesn't uh, uh, the unfruitful works of darkness have more than just lgbtq maybe it could be some form of witchcraft maybe it could be some form of spiritualism uh um anything that teaches that hey god didn't create this world but there's uh multiple worlds and multiple people that you know exist out there that because there is no god could it be something like that why doesn't he talk about that he's only talking about this because this is what's current and this is what's uh, infuriating a lot of Christianity and these popular, I'm assuming, mega churches that he goes to, um, that that get political. And why isn't he boycotting, say, Walmart or Target because they sell, I don't know, Star Wars uh, t-shirts? They sell Marvel t-shirts uh, that you know all teach there is no God, right? Why doesn't he go against that? Why doesn't he go against Walmart or, or Target because they sell movies that are against God? Or maybe they sell unclean food that the Bible says is an abomination as well that we shouldn't be eating. Or why don't we boycott Target or Walmart because, hey, they sell liquor. And the Bible says that a Christian should not be drinking alcohol. Why don't we boycott them for that? But he chooses this. 
And he's only choosing this, as I said, because it's my belief that the Christian church is running into this and they're causing issues over an issue that's always been and isn't really an issue. Now, how do you engage in the lifestyle of LGBTQ as a Christian? You f become friends with these people because they are people. They're still God's people. They just have a different understanding of lifestyle living, right? So how do we as Christians talk to these people and engage with them? As Jesus would with any of us, right? We tend to believe that one person's sin is greater than our own sin, right? We may be living a lifestyle that's not right. Let's say this gentleman, and I'm sure he does, because most Christians do. Let's say this gentleman drinks alcohol. What's to say that his sin is not worse or equal to the sin of a, someone who's living an LGBTQ lifestyle? But yet in his eyes, and in many other Christians' eyes, drinking alcohol is just okay. Because they use the verse out of context and they use the story of Jesus turning the water into wine and make it into alcohol rather than grape juice as the Bible intended it to be, right? So Jesus did not make alcohol. But what do they do? They leave out all the statements of the Old Testament that talks about how bad alcohol is and how we shouldn't do it. And they leave all that out and just say, well, Jesus turned the water into wine, therefore I can drink alcohol. And... I don't see that as a sin, but I see LGBTQ as a sin. Therefore, I need to speak about against that. But I'm going to forget what I'm doing because I enjoy that. Therefore, I'm going to leave that out. And this is what's happening in Christianity. They're, they're mocking God and they're actually causing more division rather than bringing unity. Because instead of embracing these people and helping them to come to an understanding of God, which in turn will help them understand a the right lifestyle, they tend to put up the divisions, these walls of division, and they attack them over something that's nonsensical, right? Who cares? Now, this guy brought it up. Some people may think it's not a problem, this or that, or it's political. Yeah, it is political. And that's the only reason why you're bringing it up. You know, who cares if they have a line, a clothing line to, to LGBTQ? It's obviously that that's the only thing that bothers you. But why doesn't it bother you about the rest of their clothing lines? Why doesn't it bother you about the rest of the stuff that they sell in the store? I mean, are you going to boycott Walmart? Are you going to boycott your local gas station and not buy gas, not buy food or whatever you get at these grocery stores because they sell cigarettes? They kill the body that we shouldn't be smoking are you going to do that because they sell hints of pornography in their store even though if it's not really pornography but maybe it could be you know why is it that you're choosing this well there's a reason because they've chosen to make it to make their life or their their war cry all about this when why there's no point and who are you going to win how are you going to win people? Now, he mentions in this next video that he supposedly has friends that are part of the LGBTQ community. Well, let me ask you something. This video that you just posted and it got a bunch of backlash. How does that help your friendship with those supposed friends that are part of the LGBTQ community? It's not going to help. It's only going to hurt. But if you were just to keep your mouth closed and not say anything but actually engage with these people who are supposedly your friends and win their trust, knowing, uh, helping them to know that, hey, you are a genuine Christian. You really care about me. Although we have differences of opinion, you still really do care about me. Therefore, you win their trust and then they know that they can confide in you. They can talk to you about things because you're a reasonable person and you don't view them as evil even though you don't agree with their lifestyle, there's differences the way we need to go about things. And these people are not going about these things the right way. And it's not necessarily a fault of theirs. It's the way they're being taught. Religion today, especially Christianity, has not become the Christianity that's founded in the Bible. It's just become another political movement in the form of Christianity. That's all it's become. And that's sad that it's become that, but that's really what it is. So that's why I, I see these people and the saddest thing is these people are the ones that are being put on TV and they're becoming the face of Christianity. Um, like 
when everyone thinks about Christianity, who do they always turn to, to for guidance? They turn to the papacy, right? They turn to the Pope. He is the face of Christianity when many people do not realize that the Pope himself and the organization that he runs is in biblically labeled as the Antichrist beast that's going to go against Christ and kill his people in the uh, in the end times. But why do they turn to him? Because he's the face. But yet their teachings are contrary to what the Bible teaches. Yet they're still the face. And these are the people that get publicity. Why? Because the main goal of Satan, especially in media, is to turn people away from God. And when people see who are non-believers, they see people like this. They see, oh, there's another hypocrite representing Christ, right? He's talking about this or that. But yet he's being political and it really doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Because when we read in the Bible, people who are true to God stand for their beliefs. We have in this case when I saw these videos, I was like, okay, Daniel chapter three, right? The fiery furnace, the three young Hebrew boys. This is a young man. They stood up for God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the, in, in the face of death, they stood for God and they went into the fire and God protected them. This man was not in the face of death, but yet when he posted his first video about his Christian belief that we need to go against these demonic figures that are Target and, and Bud Light and other things, and I'm not denying that they're somewhat demonic because of what they sell, but they're a business. What do you do? Their business. They have goods and services that we need and we can buy them. If you don't want to go to Target, why make a big stink about it? Just go somewhere else. But no matter where you go, you're never going to find a godly store. They don't exist. So what do you do next? Do you not eat? Do you grow your own food? Which, yeah, you should grow your own food. But do you, do you not get nothing from the stores? Because guess what? If you boycott Target, you're going to have to boycott every convenience store everywhere. Home Depot, Walmart, your mom and pop store, just everywhere. Because you can always find something in there that's not biblical. And because you find that one thing, you're not going to go in there? And he believes by giving them money that he's... Um, engaging in their darkness and promoting their darkness no them their promotion and what they do with their finances or is on them it's not on you you just buy goods and services for them to provide for you and your family you're not engaging in their services so what happened this guy's talking about a boycott right? Boycotting Target. He mentioned Bud Light in the beginning. And I just find that amazing with the Bud Light story with Dylan Mulvaney, right? You know, it's funny because alcohol is so bad. Even if you don't believe the Bible, just look at the statistics on what alcohol does to people and how many people it kills per year. It is evil. Even not in the biblical sense, it's evil and it kills so many people. Yet how many Christians today won't boycott Bud Light or won't boycott other uh, alcoholic beverages, their companies, right? But what does it take for a bunch of these Christians to boycott Bud Light? It takes a representative from the trans community to be a representative for Bud Light, and then they get mad. Then they get hurt. Then they call for a boycott. But, okay, so that just shows that their, their motivations are political, right? Because in our eyes right now, the political scene is against the LGBT community. Why? Because it's being forced and pushed upon every person. You know, it was always the, the belief before all this nonsense that, hey, we need to treat people of diversity uh, just like people, right? If you believe something, that's fine. That was That's what made the United States great, right? Especially w uh, with religion. Yes, we were founded as Christian nation, but that's not how we've always acted. And that's not how we've governed as a Christian nation. It's not true. As many people say, yes, it is. No, it's not true. It it may be have founded on Christian principles. They were running away from the tyranny of the papacy, right? But it hasn't been ran as a Christian government, right? Just only on the face has it been a Christian government. But the way the government speaks in its laws and the laws are not biblical. So anyway, let me get off that tangent. Okay, but... Their focus is on 
just LGBTQ+. And before, it wasn't pushed on us, but now it is. And before, it was like, why can't you just treat people the same regardless of their differences, which is what made America great, especially with religion, right? It's a, it's a nation that supposedly is a Christian nation, but any other person can still celebrate and 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 have their own religion from wherever country they came from and that's what made us unique and diverse right but here right now um before uh all this stuff was happening this push on the lgbt community it was just accept us for who we are and leave us alone and they're saying we're tired of you guys forcing your opinions on us and wanting us to change our lifestyle well now we see it's in reverse now we see they've taken a different approach, and not all of them, but it's the the um, the the mainstream uh, portion of the LGBT uh, plus community because not all of them believe in what's what's being done right now. Uh, this is why in some of the news organizations you do see people that were part of that organization who are actually speaking up about out against what's transpiring. Why? Because what's happening is uh, the LGBT plus community is being forced on everyone you can't even speak out you can't say your opinion you you can't just say anything in regards to that or else you're labeled a bigot or or you're labeled as anti-trans or anti-lgbtq and you're canceled you could lose your job in regards to if you speak out or say anything negative or, or that's viewed negative in regards to you could just say well i don't i don't agree with it and next thing you know, you're losing your job, you're losing your house, you're losing everything, all your friends too, all because you said, well, I don't agree with it. Well, what's so wrong in that? And that's basically what he said, but he went a little bit further, right? But he's using a Christian aspect to prove that it's wrong, but he's not going against the LGBT plus community so much. He's going against these companies for accepting it. And he believes that, oh, well, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon because this is what Christianity is speaking about now. And I'm going to make myself uh, someone to talk about um, in regards to this movement because I want to make myself popular. Maybe, you know, there's no reason to talk about it. Just let it go. Let it let it go through and eventually it'll probably go away. You know, there's nothing wrong with telling truth. Right. But it's the way you tell truth is what matters. Now, he believed that he was telling truth, but he didn't realize what was going to happen because he told his version of truth. Now, the why do I say his version of truth? Because what he's kind of saying is out of context. And what he's really talking about is he's using what's in the political landscape now to prove his opinion rather than using scripture. Some of you might not see it that way, but you have to look at the, a bigger picture. Don't just look at the what he's saying and what others are saying. Look at the bigger picture that's happening here. As I pointed earlier, why is he only uh, pointing out uh, Target and uh, what they're doing with the LGBT uh, uh, plus um, um, trans, trans uh, swimsuit wear? Because that's where this all started, right? It didn't start because they they already had a section for LGBTQ, but that didn't come up. It was only when the news made it, uh, were laughing about it. They didn't make it into an issue. They just reported on it and were laughing about it that, um, that they came out with a swimwear for trans men, right? Well, guess what? They're not the only ones. Nike did it, right? Uh, other clothing lines, famous clothing lines did it for the summer. Why? Because it's summer. They come out with their new clothing line. And what's the difference? Now, I'm not comparing them, although this is going to sound like I am. And But don't, don't uh, confuse what I'm going to do right now. What's the difference between, uh, say, Target coming out with a clothing line that caters to um, people of color, color, people of various sizes, people who are male, female, a clothing line for babies, a clothing line for LGBTQ, a clothing line for, um, I don't know, I can't think of any other type of person, but they have different clothing lines for many different situations, right? So even though they're making a clothing line for LGBTQ+, in a sense, it's not saying that they promote it, although the commercials kind of insinuated that they are promoting it, right? 
um, be, but they're taking advantage of something that's in, in season right now. And that's LGBTQ plus, right? And as I said earlier, a lot of companies are doing it and changing it because they want that credit rating. Well, that's typical business. How as a business person do you not take advantage of what's in right now? That's how you make money. That's how you advertise. And if that's what's in right now, why would you not make a clothing line for it? And let me ask you this. If they make a clothing line for those people, how does that affect you as a Christian? How does that hurt your Christianity? How does that hurt you? I mean, these people, not, not only that they make a clothing line from trans men, but I think they made a clothing section for uh, the young kids who are transitioning, right? And that's what caused a lot of issues as well. But how does that hurt you as a Christian? I mean, is you speaking out and you causing a fuss going to change those parents who are transitioning their kids? It's not. That's their decision as a parent. And whether we think it's wrong or right, that's their responsibility, right? Are we going to actually change that? And if we do change that, we're going to change it forcibly by using government law to change that, right? And is that the place for a Christian to do those things? Right. Or is that the job of the state and the government? And should we as Christians be mingling in that stuff? Some will say yes. Some will say no, we shouldn't. So we have to look at these other aspects and avenues before we get involved in these things and make sure that our cause is for God. Or is it really something different? And if it's something different, then, yeah, we should not engage in those things. Because this is what's going to happen to every single one of us. And everyone who has came out in regards to this has fallen in this position, just like Anthony Bass. So he came out with the first video. I'm Christian. I'm, I'm pro-God. I'm against the evils of darkness. And the evils of darkness are Target and Bud Light. And I'm not arguing that, but I'm just saying the way he said it, right? We need to speak out. We need to not give him our money. We need to boycott, you know, which it's okay. No, I'm all for that if you want to do that. But that's his message, right? It's not about coming back to God. It's not about following him. It's about we need to take revenge on these companies, right? That's what his thing is. A lot of people applauded him, but he got a lot of backlash online. Not only did he get backlash, but what I found, what was interesting, is he got backlash from his employer. Why? Why? Because his employer is pro-LGBTQ as far as what we believe. Now, even if they're not pro-LGBTQ, now they have a representative who represents their company, right? He first came on as a Christian representing God. Didn't realize, oh yeah, I forgot... I'm employed by a company that's a huge organization that's known worldwide, at least world nationwide, right? And he realized what I just said is now going to affect my income and my family. Oops. He didn't realize that before. He doesn't pay attention and doesn't have the understanding that all these people, many people came before him and have spoken out against this movement. They've all been canceled. They've all lost their jobs. They've lost a lot of things. But no, he's going to be the first one that's going to go against the system and nothing's going to happen to him, right? Wrong. He didn't have that common sense to understand this. And I'm not saying that, you know, if, if that you shouldn't speak out, if it's not um, popular, you know, the truth is the truth. I'm, if you listen to me, I could care less what anybody says about me. What matters to me is saying the truth. But at the same time, this isn't really truth that he's speaking about. This is taking a position to go against something that I believe is not necessarily standing up for God. He's just making a fool of himself because he's been led to think that this is the hill to die on. 
that this is the 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 war that he needs to be part of and it's interesting that many of these figures and it's not just popular people but many people believe that it's their war to go against this or against that but when you ask them hey why don't we go door to door and try and uh, and uh, and uh, talk to people about god no nah, that's not for me or why don't we do uh, a meeting a public meeting and we'll teach the the principles of the bible right or why don't we uh, send out a bunch of videos that represent the 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 biblical perspective of the bible now nah, i'm good i don't have time but yet they engage in issues like this that get them clicks and likes and popularity, even if it's negative popularity. If someone said any type of publicity is good publicity, right? Well, they like to engage in this. Why? Because it puts them at the center of attention. And I'm not saying that that's why he did it, but that's what it seems like. It's not about God. It's about them. And if you've looked at recent posts by him and TikTok and why he's been in the media, it's probably about him, right? It's not about God. It's probably about him. But he came into a problem. Now he has to face the LGBT plus community and all those that are in favor of him. And he didn't realize that that's a big community that's in the media and they have big voices. We always tend to believe that, yeah, it's a small group of people that have the loudest voice. And I do believe that. But this small group of people in this community have a big voice and they know the right people. And now he's going to find out that he messed with the wrong person. And now his Christianity is going to truly show in this next video so to preface this video his employer saw the video because someone sent the employer the video and said look at what he said his employer did not like it so what do you do as an employer you go talk to your employee why did you say this why did you do this okay when he says his piece right then this is what the employer says okay great this is what you believe that's fine but you're an employee and you represent us. And because you represent us, you you have to follow our rules of conduct as an employee. If you don't, we're going to have to terminate your contract and you're going to be let go. Now he has a dilemma. Do I do what my employer says? Because that's where I make my fun, money and feed my family. Or... Do I follow God and do what I just told everyone to do in my video by not partaking with these powers of darkness and not giving them my money, not su not supporting them because they're darkness, they're sharing darkness. Now, if this employer believes in the LGBT plus community and, and, and that it's okay to do all that stuff, is not this employer, like he says, Target, and he shouldn't uh, engage or support that type of darkness. You would think that he would live up to his words. He would follow his own advice that he is giving all his Christian friends out there and followers, right? He should follow his own advice. If he's a true Christian, he should be doing what Ephesians 5 verse 11 and 12 says, right? That he read. He should not be a partaker of the, the powers of darkness, right? He shouldn't be. Well, this is what he said. Let me adjust this. Yesterday, uh, I made a post that was hurtful to the Pride community, which includes friends of mine and close family members of mine, and I am truly sorry for that. Um, I just spoke with my teammates, took them, shared with them my actions yesterday, and I apologized with them. And as of right now, I'm using the Blue Jays' resources to better educate myself to make better decisions moving forward. Uh, the ballpark is for everybody. Um, we include all fans at the ballpark, and we, and we want to welcome everybody. That's all I have to say. Yesterday. All right. Well, did you hear what he said? What did he just do? He chose the paycheck over the principles of God that he told everyone that they should follow. Forgive me for my camera uh, having some issues there. Um, yeah.
Okay, so let me just try that. Okay, so what did he do? He walked back everything he said. Everything that he just told the, the people in his previous video to stay away from the from the fruits of darkness, all this other stuff that he said because they're demonic and we shouldn't give them our money. We should boycott Target. We should boycott Bud Light. And now when his job is on the line, he says, okay, okay, master, if you want to call it that, my employer, I'll do whatever you say. Just don't fire me. Right? He gave in. He caved in. I thought he was supposed to be a Christian. I thought what mattered to, to him most was what the Bible says, right? If we're followers of God, we follow the Bible. That's first and foremost what we follow. But did he? No. He chose, he chose his employer. Why? For money. He chose money over God. He could have went and got a job somewhere else or somewhere different. No. He chose his job over God. So what matters most to him? He was the face of Christianity for a time. And now he just threw away God to the curb for money, for his job. How is that a true Christian? And what does he do? He just made a mockery of God to the world. And to those who are having trouble believing in God, he just became another hypocrite. And to those that are believers in the faith, he just gave a bad example of what a Christian truly is. And this is why everyone views Christians as hypocrites. Because they really don't believe what they say. They only believe what they say until, you know, times like this, when it benefits them, then they'll just change their mind. This is why we need to be careful on how we stand what positions we take and when we speak out. Because just like many that came before this guy, it didn't work out very good. And why didn't it work out very good? Because it wasn't genuine. And he took up the wrong cause. And he was probably misled by someone else. And he jumped on the bandwagon. And now he's understanding the consequences do I believe that this was a genuine apology? No, I don't, because it's obviously you could tell that it's not. It's basically what he was told to say. And by the way he delivered it to, you could tell that he was kind of maybe upset and flustered because of the way he was speaking and the way he was breathing. You could tell he didn't want to give that statement, but he still did. And now everything he said means nothing. His case for God means nothing. And yet, as I said, he just told the world, Christianity doesn't mean anything. He went on his platform and tried to take a stand for God. And he was put in his place by his employer. And he took the side of the employer rather than taking the side of God. But yet, I'm sure he believes that he's still a true Christian because he's doing it for his family. And I'm sure he will make himself believe that for however long just like I said earlier, many Christians will make themselves believe alcohol is okay. But it's not biblical and the Bible says stay away from it. Don't drink it. Yet, they say it's okay. And I'm sure many Christians, especially this guy, will say, eh, it's okay. Because God wants me to provide for my family. And this is the occupation that he's giving me to provide for my family. So it's okay. But is that the lifestyle of a Christian? Did Jesus teach his disciples? Well, you know, it's okay for you guys to do this or that, even if it gives up me. You know, did he tell people, excuse me, did he tell Peter, you know, it's okay that you denied me? No, he confronted him about his denial. And he talked to him about that. So much that he mentioned it three times to him about the denial. And Peter realized what he did and Ask for forgiveness three times. You can see that in the statements. And he truly converted. Did he have his problems going forward? He had a couple hiccups. Some that were mentioned in the Bible. And he had to be um, um, reprimanded by Paul. Who was younger in the faith. And that happens to every single one of us. And it will happen for the rest of our lives. But when we publicly publicly come out like this. And take a stance. 
We need to realize the ramifications. We need to realize what's going to happen. And as I said earlier, you don't judge what you say based off the consequences of your actions. But you need to make sure what you do is actually the right hill to have the war on. Don't do it just because of politics. Don't do it just because someone convinces you this is the war that you need to engage in. Because that war may not be the war that God intended you to be on top of and fight. Because this is not the war. It's so much deeper than this. This is a non-issue. Yet, some Christians make it a big issue. And to be honest, they don't never follow up with their intentions either. I remember a while back when people wanted to boycott Burger King. Because Burger King was celebrating Pride Month, which is what we're in, right, in June. And they had a multicolored uh, Whopper wrapper. And all the Christians were like, that's demonic because they have a multicolored Whopper wrapper for Pride Month. They celebrate all the months. They have a significance to it. Whether it's, um, I forget, like the special months uh, that they have. Like, uh, I know they do for, for um, uh, what's it called? Um, now I'm having uh, um, a senior moment, as they call it, right? I'm having trouble focusing, too. Um but Black History Month, right? They engage in that, and so do other companies. And whatever other com uh, other months they have that are recognized nationally, they engage in that. You know, are you going to boycott them as well? Yeah, they would say boycott. But what happened? As soon as the month was over and they got rid of the rapper, everyone was back to eating Burger King. No one said anything. So what's the issue? If there is an issue, it should be an ongoing issue. Not just one to where, okay, well, then, you know, I'll just forget about this issue this month and I'll go back to doing what I was doing. No, if it's true and if it's biblical, then it always is. It doesn't, it's not seasonal or it's not occasional. And what we find here is this gentleman, Anthony Bass, and other Christians are engaging in seasonal acts and seasonal problems and they're causing more problems than what they're helping. And the only reason why I brought this up is because I don't want any of us to be like this type of a Christian. To where we engage in seasonal things and we die on hills that we shouldn't even be on in the first place. That it really doesn't matter. And while we are to speak truth all the time, in season or out of season, as the Bible says, you know, we do so because we want to share the truth with other people. We don't want to do it for popularity or fame, or we don't want to do it because we're convinced by someone else to do it. No, it's a leading of God, and it's a love on your behalf that you want to share the truth to others who don't know God. That's why we do these things. We don't do it for anything else. And when we do do it for something else rather than God, then just like this gentleman, we fall flat on our face. And sometimes, like this guy, it's done where the world can see it. And not only do now, and only now uh, with this gentleman, not only is his reputation messed up, but now God's reputation is messed up because he took on the form and character of God, supposedly. And then when the fire came, he turned on God and chose the world. Let's not be like this guy, friends. And while God can forgive him and he can change and be a, a warrior for God, he can be. He still has a chance. He still has breath in him. Let's not, let's use these examples of how not to be. Let's not put ourselves out there and go die on hills that really don't matter. And in the form of things, he could have actually went against this and diff did it a completely different way. But he chose to do it this way. Because this is the popular way of doing the, doing things. This is the organizing way of doing things these days. Remember he said we needed to take a radical approach to these things. Notice that word radical. Because for the past two years, that's what Christianity has been putting out. All because there's a certain organization out there 
a, a, a video organization, a, a television perspective that Christianity needs to be radical. Christianity doesn't need to be radical. Radical has a negative connotation on it in both ways, no matter how you look at it. Christianity doesn't need to be radical. Christianity needs to be truthful and honest and follow what the Bible has to say, regardless of what anyone's opinion is. But in this case, it is radical, but it's not biblical. Well, my friends, this is Ray. I'm with I'm your host with Biblical Thinking. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot from it. And I hope I could do many, many more videos to come. So pray for this guy. Pray for those that um, got affected by him. And let's pray that God can use this outcome of uh, this man's story to make a positive, not only in his life, but in others as well. Well, have a great day, friends, a great night, great evening, weekend, whatever it is, whenever it is that you listen to this video. And I pray for many more blessings to each and every one of you. God bless and have a good day.